Hey guys, this lets you look at inflation inertia. Now this is a very interesting concept because we've always been told that prices adjust to prevailing levels of act of demand. So we have we talked about relative prices sending price signals to producers to change their price. So what this means is that relative prices being the price of one good relative to another, a change in relative prices would actually send price signals to producers so that they produce more of one good and therefore would increase the price of that good according to the law of supply. So we always talked about how an increase in demand would lead to an increase in inflation. So that's a basic concept that we've been drilled, uh, that has been drilled into our minds. But now this lecture will focus on this concept, or this very interesting concept of inflation inertia. So inflation inertia is when, in the short term, prices are fixed. So in the short term, even though there may be changes in prevailing levels of aggregate demand, prices for goods and services do not change. So that in the short term, inflation here is what we call as inert or fixed. So inflation doesn't actually occur in the short term, it only occurs in the medium to long term. And this is a fundamental concept to Keynesian economics. But we're not going to look at Keynesian economics for now. We'll just look at this concept of inflation, inflation inertia, or the inertial rate of inflation, and why this actually occurs. Okay, so we're going to look at two basic causes of inflation inertia. So we'll look at one, this idea of menu costs. And we're going to look at two, this idea of fixed wages or contracts that prevent inflation or the price level to change in the short short term. So first we're going to look at the presence of menu costs. So we're going to look at this in terms of an example of a say a fish and chip shop and this is a very basic example. So we're going to look at just in this uh, specific case that demand for fish and chips increases and it increases to a rate where the fish and chip shop has to over utilize their labor so assume for the moment that there has been a very uh, large or high increase in hot weather and that when hot weather because people would tend to buy fish and chips and they would buy fish and chips and go to the beach. So assume that for whatever reason or climatic change that the demand for fish and chips in that shop has increased dramatically. And so what the fish and chip shop prior to this change in demand set the price of the fish and chips, let's say this was at ten dollars, they've actually printed out this on their menus. So they got 20 menus laminated and they've said that fish and chips cost $10. So we're going to assume that because there has now been an influx in demand that these, this $10 is not at equilibrium. So if somehow the fish and chip shop owners found a demand and supply graph or drew out a demand and supply graph where quantity and so excuse me price and quantity, somehow the price, the equilibrium price of the fish and chips, which was initially at $10, has actually increased, and so the demand has actually shifted to the, the right, and that at $10 there is actually a shortage in demand, so here the quantity supplied, $10, 
recorded demanded is here, we can see that there is a shortage of fish and chips. However, we, we also noted that they had laminated their menus. And to change their menus, they have to print out more more menus and they have to re-laminate it and this will cost around another two hundred dollars, let's say, for example say. So it becomes in inefficient for these fish and chip shop owners to actually change or redo their menu so that this equilibrium price here of fish and chips is at fifteen dollars. So they, they, they want to increase the price of fifteen dollars but they can't because they have to re redo their menus and that will cost an extra $200. So they can't actually increase their price to $15 because of these menu costs. Although in the long term, if they use uh, special cases of, um, or specific cases of customer survey, or they experience a sustained increase in demand for their for their fish and chips, then they would actually respond by increasing the price. But in the short term, they can't be sure that the, this price change is actually permanent. It may be seasonal, or it may be that because of that day, there has to be more, more consumers, or more people wanting to buy fish and chips on that particular day. So the fish and chip shop owners can't be sure that the, the price has increased permanently, and so because of these prevailing menu costs, they, they don't have the incentive to actually change their price. But eventually, to meet the higher levels of demand, assuming that the demand curve has actually shifted, the firm will then raise prices to allow for the rising marginal cost of the extra output. Okay, so this rising marginal cost comes from overutilized labor and over time. So that's the first reason why inflation is inert in the short term because of menu costs. Secondly, we consider wages and contracts. So sometimes let's assume that demand decreases. So the demand has actually shifted to the left and therefore producers are becoming unprofitable in this market. And so what they want to do is to maximize profits, and so they want to, in theory, theoretically, cut labor. Because labor is the or highest cost or the largest cost of production pertaining to firms. But let's say these labor workers have actually signed a 10-year contract. This is a very exaggerated example, of course, and not every labor worker has signed your contract, but let's assume that in this firm, or this fish and chip shop, um, employees have actually signed a 10-year contract. So this contract is for 10 years. So because they are fixed, these contracts, the producers can't cut labor, and therefore their prices must stay at this point at $10, even though, let's assume, straw new graph even though we're assuming that the price or the equilibrium price of fish and chips has decreased. You can see that there's quantity, there's price, and even though prior to this decrease in demand, the equilibrium price and quantity was at say $10 and Q1. After the shift in demand, we can see that this new equilibrium price is say at eight dollars. But assuming that we're paying labor at this margin of eight dollars, the producers can't actually decrease their price because then they would have make no profit. So because of this existence of fixed contracts or wages, producers don't have the ability or the capacity to actually decrease prices in the in the very short term. But in the long term once these contracts have finished, then these producers can theoretically cut labor or make new contracts embedding lower rates or lower pay in order to make this profit.
So that's why inflation is inert in the short run. Firstly, because of these, the presence of menu costs. And secondly, because of the presence of these fixed contracts embedded in the cost of production of firms.